Christ. Christ will overcome that Antichrist. We are the one inside. We are with Christ. Light will overcome darkness. The truth will overcome error. And love will over, overcome the force of hatred. God's will will overcome man's will. Faith is going to overcome doubt. And hope will overcome despair. Stay on the right side. No matter what power and no matter what kind of strategy, no matter what ingenuity, the Antichrist or the people following the Antichrist, no matter what they manifest, stay on the side of Christ and you will win the day eventually in Jesus' name. We come to point number three, the perdition of the Satan-controlled king. The perdition of the Satan-controlled king. We're looking at it from Daniel chapter 11 verse 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end. We're now coming to the final period and it's just the period preceding the coming of Christ, preceding the time of the millennial reign when Christ will come to set up his 1,000 year reign. And it says even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. But this Antichrist will do terrible, terrible things just before the final time. In verse 30 it says, And the king shall do according to what? According to his will. And that's why my brothers and sisters and my children, sons and daughters, I've told you every time that we shouldn't ever think about just having our own way, doing my own will. Because that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Anybody that will say, I will have my way, I will go my own way, I will do my own thing. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. In fact, it tells us, look at Daniel chapter 8 and verse 4. Daniel chapter 8 verse 4. I, I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward and so that uh, so that no beast might stand before him neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand but he did according to what according to his will and became great it's something that you know many times makes me very happy and makes me rejoice when I hear testimonies about our people and sometimes, uh, you know, just uh, some time ago, a few weeks ago, I had a testimony. Because uh, a deeper life, uh, people, they went to a particular place where in fact they were invited there. And when they got there, their comportment, their lifestyle, their honesty, and their righteousness, it struck the people there. And then they went to tell the pastor of that uh, church where those uh, deeper life people came from. They said, you know, your people, they have made a mark in our midst. That they, they just acted like this and even though they didn't spend a long time there yet it was very clear they were just for the will of God while the other people will say this is what we are going to do and this is what we are going to have these are gentle righteous children of God coming from our church here they represented Christ and they represented the church very well in that place when it comes to your turn to do that you will be like that that people will see that the gentle spirit of the Lamb of God is within us. And the lonely life of Christ is within every one of us. We will not do our will, we will do the will of God in Jesus' name. Let us look at this Daniel chapter 11 verse 3. Daniel 11 verse 3. And a mighty king shall stand up and that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. That is characteristic of the Antichrist. Antiochus Epiphany, he did according to his own will. Alexander the Great, he did according to his own will. Absalom, the son of the son of David, he did according to his own will. And when the Antichrist comes to you, he will do according to his own will. They are all the same. They look alike. Absalom, Alexander, and Antiochus, Antichrist, all of them starting the same way, just their own will. And that's why anytime you see something rising up in your heart, that you know, the Lord is telling us, teaching us in the word of God, in doctrine of the Bible, this is the way to go. And when our leaders emphasize it, and our leaders are teaching us that this is the will of God, and the Spirit of God is saying, this is the way, what key there is. If something is rising up inside you, are saying, no, I will not do that. I'm going to have my own will. Say, no, I'm not going to allow this thing rising up in my heart. That is the Spirit of the Antichrist. You will subdue it. You will crush it. So that 
the Lord will make you like Christ and not at the Antichrist. You know what Christ said? I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. That will be your life. Look at verse 16. It says, But he, he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will. We're coming back now to Daniel chapter 11 verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and he shall speak marvelous blasphemous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation shall be accomplished, for that 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 is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. You know what that means? That it's likely to be like an homosexual. He will be a man, but he will not have any desire for women. The natural desire of a man to a woman, of a husband to a wife, he will not have that desire. He will just you know, want to relate with men as if they were women. He will not have the desire of women, nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all. And then he says, But in his estate shall be shall he honor the God of forces, the God of hatred, and the God of, uh, of just fighting. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. And then he says, Lord, shall he do in the most strongholds with his with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. He'll just, uh, he'll just uh, have all the power, the authority that he can bring to himself. And it says in verse 40 that at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. There will be terrible wars, nation rising against nation, king rising against kings at that time. In verse 41, and he shall enter also into where? The glorious land. Where is the glorious land? What's that? Israel. That's the people of Israel. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of, uh, of the children of Amnon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape, but it shall have power over the treasures of gold and of, of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his test. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him, shall trouble him. I, so, I thought you would say Amen. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, and utterly to make a way, to take, to make away many. Then he says, And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. We're going to read this last part. It's so wonderful, so marvelous. One, two, three, go. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Christ will reign forever and ever. See that Antichrist, we have read it already. He shall do according to his will. Verse 36. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every God. Verse 36. He shall speak marvelous, terrible, blasphemous things against the God of gods. In verse 36. He shall magnify himself above all that is called God. As verse 37. He shall honor the God of forces. Verse 38. He will be opposed to God. He will be opposed to Christ. He will be opposed to everyone that is righteous. He will speak against God and fight against the people of God, that is the children of Israel. He will resist Christ and the establishment of his kingdom of peace. He will use false and diabolical wickedness to try and to turn the whole world against the almighty God and against righteousness. He shall stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken. And he shall come to his end and none shall help him. In fact, that's what the New Testament says. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 8. And you will see that this Antichrist eventually will be destroyed. Eventually, he will come to his end. Chapter 2, reading from verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
when he shall be destroyed, thank God, you are on the Lord's side. And all the people that are with him, they are also going to have face the judgment of God. And they are going to be destroyed in Jesus' name. We are coming back to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. We are reading from verse 35. Daniel chapter 2 verse 35. It says, Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken in pieces together and became like chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone is referring to Christ, the very Son of God, the cornerstone of the, of the final building of the church. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The kingdom of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, will fill the whole earth. In verse 44, and in the days of this king shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never, never, never be destroyed. That's why I said we are on the winning side. We have the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings. And because we belong to Him, we are going to reign with the Lord. It says, He will set up the kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God, as uh, the great God of heaven has come, as uh, made known unto the king, what shall come to pass hereafter? And the dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. Let's look at chapter 7 of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7. I'm looking at verse 13 and verse 14. Daniel 7. We're looking at verse 13. And I, I saw in the night vision. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom with that which shall not be destroyed. Christ will reign over the whole earth. But the question is, at that time when Jesus will reign over the whole earth, where will you be and where will I be? Look at verse 20. Look at verse 26. In verse 26 it says, And judgment and the judgment shall cease, and they shall take away his dominion. That is, dominion of the Antichrist shall be taken away, and consume and destroy each unto the end. Look at verse 27. This is for you, this is for us. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey Him. My question to you, my brother, my sister, would you be there at that time? Reign with Christ. I said, will you reign with Christ? If we are born again and we hold on to the very end, we don't allow temptation, trial, and trouble, persecution to sway us and make us turn back. And we live a day at a time. The grace of God is sufficient for you. And if you are getting tired, go back to the cross and go back to Calvary and say, Lord, I'm getting tired. Strengthen me again. God will strengthen you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You will renew their st your strength. You will run. You will not be weary. You will walk, you will not faint. And the hand of the Lord will be upon you. The anointing of the Lord will be upon your life. The grace of God will never fail in your life. Until Christ comes, you will keep standing. And when He comes, He will take you home. And when all these things were written about happening in the world, you will not be here to taste any of those things. Christ will reign, you and I will reign with Christ in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. You will be there, I will be there to reign with Christ. And this time of the Antichrist, we will not be in the world at that time. Talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I thank you. What a great privilege we have as the children of God. Born again, cleansed with the blood of the Lamb, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want you to keep me. I want you to help me. I want you to strengthen me. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. 
Don't allow the devil to turn your mind and turn your eyes and turn your ears and turn your focus away from Christ. I don't allow any deceiver, any flatterer, any hypocrite to come and deceive you and make you fall away from your steadfastness. And you say, Lord, I know the spirit of the Antichrist is already working in the world. But I'm not going to allow that to dissuade me, to persuade me, to turn me away from the Lord. I'm going to stand to the very edge. The Lord will stand by you. The Lord will keep you. He will not let you fall. He keeps every child of God. He gives grace to every child of God. He loves every one of us, children of God. And He knows what is coming ahead in the period of the Great Tribulation. He knows what's coming ahead at the time when the Antichrist will reign. That's why He's teaching us and revealing and exposing all these things to us so that when that time shall come, we will not be here. It's getting us ready, getting us prepared. Sick people of God, sanctified people of God, spirit people of God. He's telling us, keep standing. Don't fall, don't fall, don't give up, don't give in to the adversary, to the devil, to the enemy. Don't get discouraged, don't get discouraged. The Lord is on your side and grace is available for you. And the strength of the Lord is available for you. And His power is available for you. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. And you know, whatever persecution you are facing now, you cannot compare the persecution of today or the terrible, painful, deadly persecution of that coming time, the time of the Antichrist. That's why you shouldn't allow anything of today, any challenge of today, any pressure of today, any persecution of today, any pain of today, of this day, to make you turn back, to make you give up, to make you backslide. That time of the Antichrist will be a terrible time, because that Antichrist will be the vile person, will be the son of perdition, be the one that opposes all righteousness and opposes the Almighty God. It will be anti everything that is for God, anti everything that is for righteousness, anti everything that is for sanctification, anti everything that is for righteousness. The persecution will be terrible at that time. But you are standing for the Lord, you are standing with the Lord. Don't allow deception, don't allow deception. Be on the left side, you can prevail. You will prevail. You're on the left side, it's on your side too. It says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. It says, I will hold your right hand. It says, So many of you are the everlasting arms. And it says, When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you, you'll not be drowned. When you pass through the fire, I'll be with you. The flame will not burn you up. It says the Son of God, the presence of the Son of God will be with you. Like it was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You'll meet all your needs. You don't have to go to false prophets to get anything, to have anything. You don't have to go to Judas Iscariot to share part of his 30 piece of silver. All your needs are supplied by Christ. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You don't have to follow demons who has forsaken the people of God and has gone back into the world. Friendship of the world is enmity with God. Don't do that, don't do that. Keep on standing, keep on staying, keep on abiding. 
If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and shall be done unto you. The promises are sufficient.